Atkinson and Schifrin. We'll try that again in English. Atkinson and Schifrin. Multi store. Model of memory. The original idea was based on uh, a single insight that they got probably from looking at early computer theory and that is that there is this absolute difference between short term memory storage and long term memory storage and they call them STM and LTM. And that absolute difference is that you could you can have damage to the short term memory store, which results in uh, people not being able to handle or process information, turn it into stuff, but being able to recall and hold stuff in their long term memories. And they use clinical evidence to support that, and also experimental evidence. You've seen other bits and pieces get added onto this diagram. So besides that, we usually also have this notion of the sense memory not an important part of the original model but something that has become appended to it and become an important consideration. So we have these three stores and the three stores are connected by a number of processes. So the first connecting process is this one here so where sense memory through the process of attention attention that process transfers the vast large amount of data we have in sense memory through attentional filters into a small amount that's encoded acoustically in short term memory. Then we have rehearsal where information is essentially fed back into the short term memory through verbal or sub vocal repetition. So we either repeat it out loud to ourselves or we say it over and over in our head. It's a bit like the experience of saying the telephone number when you've looked it up in a book. Enough short-term memory rehearsal will result in transfer into the long-term memory. So this process here is called rehearsal. And they meant literally rote rehearsal, like uh, saying the thing, chanting it over and over. Those are the two inbound processes, if you like, for memory. And of course, where we have an inbound process, we have to then have some kind of outbound process so as the information comes back out of long-term memory through what we call retrieval and is put back into short-term memory so as that we can use it in some way. Um, those are the essentials of the thing. The spec doesn't require us to know the, the other bits and pieces that you might see in some of your textbooks. Nobody asks you about forgetting anymore. Um, I'm not going to put it in here then. So the other things that we really ought to be able to say with some degree of accuracy and facility are key characteristics. And when we talk about the key characteristics of human memory, what we're on about are those dreadful words that you remember from your early lectures, encoding, duration, and capacity. And as we say, encoding, how the thing is stored, duration, how long it'll be stored for, capacity, how much we can hold. So in short-term memory and long-term memory, there are different key characteristics. Uh, as far as Atkinson and Schifrin were concerned, encoding in short-term memory is acoustic in terms of sounds. Literally, they imagined you seeing a thing and then giving it a name and saying the name over and over to yourself. And long-term memory was semantic in terms of meanings. So it no longer mattered what particular name you gave the thing you saw, provided the meaning was comparable. And they got a bunch of research data to support that idea as well. Um, duration, how long the thing lasts for. Without rehearsal,
human short-term memory lasts for 3 to 18 seconds, declining from 80% to 10% accuracy of recall. In other words, if we can't rehearse the thing, we're, we're good to go on about 80% of what we've been given for about three seconds. After the three seconds is up, we start to lose it. And we lose it very rapidly, such that within 20 seconds we can't remember hardly any of it in a reliable way at all. Long-term memory, very different kettle of fish. How long will it last for? Anywhere from minutes... to a lifetime. And we also, some, we also sometimes see this in the books where they'll say things like anywhere from a minute to a lifetime on the use it or lose it basis. You know, so if you don't use a human long-term memory it has a tendency to decay or get displaced or worn out or whatever. We don't know very much about it. Capacity, how much can you store? If you're like Mr. Miller, you have a tendency to say something dumb like 7 plus or minus 2 items. That's dumb because we never properly operationalized items. When we use experimental procedures to measure human short-term memory, the capacity gets measured in terms of single digit span, and so the item tends to be digits. But that's not very ecologically valid, is it? You know, I mean, people don't sit around just membering digits. So when, when Miller says seven plus or minus two items, it explains why we use chunking as a memory strategy, but because he doesn't operationalize items, was he talking about digits, names, uh, titles of books, days of the week, it's hard to know, and therefore not a very intelligent way to think about the problem. You're much better off to follow Mr. Badley's idea and say that human short-term memory has a capacity of as much as can be rehearsed in about two seconds. In other words, if you're a gangster rapper and you can rap stuff out really fast, you'll have a larger capacity short-term memory than if you're somebody like me who can't gabble on quite so quickly. So that leaves me with one last thing. What's the capacity of long-term memory? And technically, that is unmeasurable. I am obviously struggling to write here. And it's unmeasurable for a number of pragmatic reasons, but thank goodness, really, because you don't want to run out of long-term memory capacity. Imagine that. That would be truly dreadful, wouldn't it? So, here we are. Atkinson and Schifrin's multi-store model of memory consists of three stores. Sense memory, a large capacity, very brief duration store, which is multiply modal. Yeah, it consists of all the different senses. The attentional process, which filters that down into short-term memory storage, comprising essentially sounds, acoustic encoding, of stuff that could be rehearsed for less than two seconds. We have a rehearsal process, rote rehearsal. It can either be out loud or under our breath, sub-vocal. And sufficient rehearsal will pass information to the long-term memory store. The long-term memory store is encoded in terms of meaning, has no upper limit that we've managed to reach yet in terms of its capacity, and will last anywhere from minutes to a lifetime. Finally, the long-term memory can be persuaded to retrieve and place stuff back from it into short-term memory. There's our key characteristics. Short-term storage is acoustic in terms of sound. Long-term storage is semantic in terms of meaning, duration. Uh, anywhere between 3 and 18 seconds with a declining reliability from 80 to 10% for the short-term storage. Long-term memory, anywhere from minutes to lifetime. Capacity, 7 plus or minus two items if you like Mr Miller and a bit dick and finally uh, as much as you can remember will be rehearsing in two seconds and the capacity of long-term memory is unmeasurable and that my friends is it